How many of you all noticed that it's early? <laughs> Some of you all not awake yet to notice that it's early. And you're trying to figure out what in the world you're doing out of bed this early on Sunday morning when church don't start till 1030. <laughs> Who said that out loud? Mike? <laughs> hey. <clears throat> if you've got your Bibles this morning, I'd, I'd like you to turn them over to St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 27 and chapter 28. And uh, I... Uh, I guess for me this morning, hey, good morning. I didn't see you guys sneak in, and I didn't get a hug you. I'm glad you're here. Um, I, uh, I guess this morning I, I want to plant um, a thought in your mind. Um, so this morning's sunrise service uh, may be just a little bit different than what uh, we might be uh, normally accustomed to. Uh, but uh, I, I thought when I walked outside this morning, I heard the birds. Uh, and I mean, it, <clears throat> for me, when I walked outside, it was, it was way early. And uh, heard the birds singing. And uh, I thought about uh, the rock. And that's what I want to preach to you about this morning. I, I want you to think about the rock that was rolled in front of the tomb. And... I know that's a strange, but, but if you think about it this morning, before I get too deep into the message, or if I get too deep into the message, I, I want you to think about everything that has transpired now from the other day when they had crucified the Lord, when they beat him, when they spit upon him, when they stabbed him, when they took his body down, when they took him to the graveyard, they stuck him in a tomb, and can you imagine for a couple of days what was going on in the environment, in the society that was around there? I, I thought about it, and, and we went uh, and saw the uh, Peter's Progress thing up at the prison, and it followed Peter from just before the Lord's crucifixion through that, and, and I wonder what Peter must have been thinking. Now, here's the thing. You all got to understand, Jesus had told them that he was going to die, that they were going to kill him, but he also told them in no uncertain terms, if this happens, when this happens, don't get discouraged because in just a couple days, I'm getting up. Now, if you think about that this morning, I, I want to ask you, what part, where would you be this morning? You see, because some of them was on their way to the graveyard. Some of them was in their houses. Some of them was on the road to Emmaus and on their way back. Some of them was in hiding. But I wonder if the Lord told you a couple of days ago, this is going to happen and I'm going to do something great. Where would you be this morning? You see, you all got out of bed this morning and came for a reason. Probably Myrna's Donuts. The whole chocolate milk. There you go. But the question that I have is if you were a part of this crowd, if you were a part of this time on this morning, where would you be? Where would you position yourself? You see, because I find when I read, and I will in a minute, but I find when I read, the crowd at the graveyard was very small. There was just a few that was on their way. And even the ones that was on the way to the graveyard was not on their way there to find him in a resurrected form. They, they weren't. No, no. Now, and you said, well, preacher, what in the world are you talking about? You got to understand that, that they walked with him. They talked with him. They seen him do all of these great things. But when it came to death, they didn't figure that he had overcome. Had they listened, had they figured, did we believe if everybody out there understood that when Jesus said, I'm getting up, he got up, the churches would be full of people looking for his resurrection. I think they'd have had a graveyard service. But they didn't, and I wonder why. Well, let me read. Verse 62 of chapter 27. It says, now the next day, this is in the middle, by the way, of what's going on. This is what some of the people were doing while they were waiting on the third day. Verse 62, chapter 27. 
Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees came together unto Pilate, and they said unto him, Sir, we remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. Now, I want you to understand them remembering that he said that he was going to get up motivated them to have this conversation. That's why they're here. It motivated them to move to do something. And they told Pilate, they said, we remember that the deceiver said in other words. And I got to tell you, I think they was a little bit nervous. I, I think that they thought that there might be a modicum of truth. A just in case moment, just in case we need to do something in the middle. Now watch what he says. They told him in verse 64, command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night, steal him away, and then say unto the people, he's risen from the dead, so that the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, you have a watch, go your way, and then look what he says. Make it as sure as you can. I wonder if Pilate knew. You see, I, I wonder if he realized. I, I, I thought about this morning all over our, our country, all over the world, there are people that are celebrating, but I wonder if they really realize what happened on this Easter morning. I mean, if they understand the magnitude of what was about to take place. So the Bible said here, he told them, you've got to watch. They went and they made the sepulcher sure. And then watch what it says. Sealing the stone and setting a watch. Now, I want you to think about, I want you to think about the rock. Now, in that Easter program up there at the, uh, the prison, when I be first began to think about this, uh, they had, uh, what do they call them things? Is it a silhouette when they've got the light and the shadows come up? They, they had a silhouette uh, while they were singing over in the corner where they had drugged Jesus' body and put him in the tomb. And, and then they, they showed the stone uh, being rolled over the tomb. And then in the silhouette, in the song, in the music, all of a sudden there was a great sound and a great cracking and it showed the stone as it began to roll open. And about that time, I wonder what the rock thought. I know you all think I'm silly and maybe that I am, but you've got to understand when, when, I, when I begin to think about what, what's going on with the rock here, on one side of the rock, we find the Bible said that they set a watch. In other words, they took some guards. They sealed up the outside of the rock. They made it so nobody could move it. And then just in case, they put some guards out there and they stood there and they watched the rock. Now, my question this morning is, we know what was happening on the outside of the rock. But can you imagine what the rock saw happening on the inside? You say, well, rocks can't talk. Who told you that? Rocks can't see. Who told you that? You see, Jesus told him, if these my disciples will be still, the very rocks will cry out. The rocks will begin to testify. Well, I begin to think about this rock and it can testify this morning that on the third day, it happened exactly like the Lord said. All of, I mean, they set this big old rock. I, I, can you imagine if you'd have been this rock? Not just any old rock, <laughs> but this particular rock and they rolled it over the tomb, and on the inside, there lay, there lay the body of the Creator, the one that formed, the one that spoke, the one that made this rock. Now, I wonder if the rock knew. Well, if the rock didn't know, they couldn't praise him, but since they would cry out, it must have meant that the rock knew. 
And so can on the inside, on the outside, they, they've got a seal. On the outside, they've got a watch. They've got a guard. But on the inside, we've got a rock. And he's looking at the body of the one that spoke him into existence. Now, I don't know how old this rock was. How old are rocks? I got a notion this one was from the beginning. I think God created this rock just for this moment. Oh, and by the way, in case you all think, I believe this morning that God has created you for such a time as this. You say, well, I don't know if you got a Bible. I may have a little bit. May have a little bit. But, but I begin to think, I, I begin to think about this rock and what it was on the inside as the rock was just sitting there. The rock is not moving. The rock's not saying anything. Ooh, man, the rock isn't doing anything except watching the grave. So, I mean, his purpose, seal up the tomb. Nobody can get in, and certainly nobody can get out. <laughs> make it as sure. I wonder why Pilate said that. Have you ever wondered why he said make it as sure as you can? Maybe it was because when Jesus looked at Pilate, when they stood face to face and Jesus told Pilate, thou sayest, I am. Maybe it was because there was something that was pricked inside of Pilate's heart and he knew there was something special about this one. Something different about this one. But when the rock began to look. Now, I began to think about what's going on on the other side of the rock. Because the Bible tells me, and I know this is going to plunge a little deep this morning. But the Bible tells me that whilst that his body lay there, that he went and he preached deliverance to them that were in bondage, in prison of death. And when he came out of the grave, the Bible said that the graves burst open. I wonder what that was. Maybe it was them saying, I'm following him. <laughs> Whew. I know it's early, but I've been waiting a while on Easter to get here. And it's Easter. And I begin to think, I wonder what it was when the rock was there and they had it sealed. And on the inside, all of us, I mean, can you all imagine? Because I'm sure that in a graveyard that is full of dead bodies, I, I know, I told Bill this morning, he said, you, you got any verses you want? I said, no, I'm going to use a little preacher's license. So let's, uh, let's have a conversation this morning in the graveyard. Bunch of rocks talking. Bunch of rocks talking. Because you know, when you put somebody in the graveyard, they, they're there to stay. And the rocks began to yell at one another. You say, well, preacher, no, I don't got no Bible that says the rocks begin to yell at one another. But I wonder if, if when they begin to talk, hey, how you doing? Nothing happening. I'm just sitting here. Hey, how about nothing happening in this one? I'm just sitting here. But this rock, I, on the inside, where, where they set the seal, on the, can you imagine how the rock must have felt when all of a sudden the body of the creator of the universe began to stir? Maybe, maybe he saw the hand move. Hey, fellas. There's something going on on the inside. I know, it's silly. Maybe it is. But I've got to wonder, when I'm looking from the perspective of the rock, when all of a sudden the body of the Savior, and you say, well, wait a minute, preacher. Did the rock see the high? Well, I got a notion. The rock was the closest spectator that we got. I wonder how the rock must have felt when all of a sudden that hand began to move. <laughs> you know, the one that had spoke him into existence. Whoa, this one's going to be different. All of a sudden, he saw that hand. Hmm. Sorry, I just now saw a hand. 
Can, can you imagine what that rock must have been thinking about the time that that hand, that one that said, I am the resurrection and the life, that hand of life reached over and he got a hold of death's grave clothes and he began to peel them off. <laughs> you say, wait a minute, did he do that? Yeah, the Bible said that they found the clothes, the, the linen clothes, and they was laid in one place and the napkin that they would put over the face was folded off in a place all by itself. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder what the rock. I, have you ever wondered when the rock moved? <laughs> I'll get to that in a minute because I'm getting ahead of myself. But, but I wonder when he saw the grave clothes begin to peel. I, what was it that he saw? I, I mean, when you think about, I, I mean, look inside for a moment inside the tomb. Of the Lord. I know that when, when we think of it, you say, well, preacher, that's morbid. It depends on where you're looking. See, I'm not looking at death. I'm looking at life. I'm not looking at the grave clothes. I'm looking at the one that got up and he's taking the time to fold everything and put it in his place. I wonder what the rock thought. When he, when he, when he, I mean, if, if, you all take, if you was the rock this morning and all of a sudden inside of the grave that you had been sealed and you was looking and the fellow that was on the inside was walking around, what would you be thinking? <laughs> I thought about the rock. What was going on on the inside as he saw the hand pull back the grave clothes? Now listen. And all of a sudden, the feet began to move. You know, because I know I'm not allowed to do this. But if they had him laid out like this, and he moved the clothes, and he put his foot on the ground. Whew, <laughs> and then he put his other foot on the ground. I believe that rock would have said, hey, he's getting up. About the time, I'm telling you, if I'd have been the rock, and I ain't, but if I'd have been the rock, about the time both of his feet hit the ground, I believe I'd have rolled away too. <laughs> his feet hit the ground. Hey, fellas, this one's getting up. I know it's preacher's life. I, I, and look, I'm just, I'm having a good time because it's Easter. But can you imagine? The Lord would have known what the rock was thinking. And he just turned around and smiled. <laughs> Maybe he told the rock, he said, I told you, I told you, I told you I was going to get up. I look at the the rock, and I thought about how that, you know, they shield that rock, and they made it as sure as they could. Now, I got to tell you, they thought that they had him in a place, and they put him in there, and there was no getting out. And, but the rock, thinking, well, he's up now. He's up now. He's up now. What's going to happen next? <laughs> can, 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 can you imagine if you're the rock? Now I want you to put yourself, I want you to be the rock. And now you've got the resurrection and the life. And on the inside of the tomb of the place of death, there's life. What are you going to do? Now you've just experienced, you're you've just experienced the resurrection and the life after three days and you're the rock. And then all of a sudden you feel something on the outside. And now if you do, you concentrate on what's going on on the inside and on the outside, all of a sudden you feel something. And the hands of an angel get a hold of you. <laughs> 
And the rock says, hey, fellas, do you see what's happening over here? Man, I listened to that thing up there at that prison. And man, they had great sound effects. One of these days, Lord bless us, we'll have some great sound effects. I, I don't know, you know, how to sound effect a rock. You know, I don't know how he did it. You know, because it was a great stone. Great stone. Now I want you to think about what's about to happen. The stone began to move as the angel rolled and the earthquake. And, and, and now, now think about it. I, I mean, if I'm that stone as I'm rolled away and I'm watching, you know what he's saying? Hey, fellas! He's leaving! Yeah, oh. Wait. Say that out loud. I said we got a live one. He said, hey, fellas! We got a live one! Wow! Can you imagine the conversation that was taking place around the dinner table when the rocks got together? Preacher, you're crazy. Yeah, maybe I am. But I got to tell you, when I look, and, and, and oh, by the way, in case you, you think that this preacher has totally and completely lost his mind, the Bible says the Bible says that all of creation, all of it, that includes the rocks, are groaning for the time of his appearing. So when I think about how the rocks acted on the day that the Lord, it's not so far fetched that the rocks begin to cry out. Hey, we got a live one over here. He's leaving. I thought the scripture says that uh, when, when Peter and John ran to the tomb, when they got there, the Bible said John outran Peter. When he got there, he stood on the outside and he was looking in. I wonder if he was leaning on the rock, had his hand on it. Stooping in. <laughs> I wonder if the rock could talk what it would have told him about what happened on the inside. Leaning on. Did he not even understand that as great, as great, as great as the stone was. As much as the stone got to see. Now, let, let me, because I just now thought about this, and I just, I just want to share this just because it tickles me, and it's all right. But, but can, can you imagine, and, and, and I don't know what happened on the inside except for that he got up. But I got a notion there was a conversation going on. I, now, if you're the stone... Well, now let me just ask you, you all think that I, if you all was in the graveyard, we hours of the morning, and all of a sudden you heard a conversation, and there ain't nobody there but you, what would you be saying? You all would be a lively stone in the building then. Whew! What's happening? I heard somebody talking in the graveyard. I wonder, when John got there and he leaned on the stone, the Bible said he stooped down and he looked in. And just for a moment, can you imagine what it would have been like if that stone could have spoke to John and told him what just happened? You see, because he saw it all. He saw it all. He, he watched the plan of salvation 
and the resurrection, unlike any that had ever been, take place just a few feet from where he was sitting. I believe he had a story to tell. I believe he had a story to tell. So I wonder this morning if for a moment of time you'd look and uh, think about what was happening on the inside. You see, because on the inside, the resurrection and the life was no longer dead. On the inside, the resurrection and the life was doing exactly what he told them that he would do. He was getting up. You see, because Paul said, Paul said, if Christ be not risen, if there be no resurrection, then our preaching is in vain. Doesn't mean anything. But on the third day, a rock saw, the resurrection began to stir. On the third day, the rock saw, the resurrection get up. On the third day, the rock saw, the resurrection walk out. Now, I got to tell you what, for the rock, for the resurrection to walk out of death's grip must have been an amazing thing. Must have been an amazing thing. But may I say to you this morning, and then I'll close, it's really not any different than what has happened to us. At a point in our lives, when we give a heart to the Lord, we walk out of death's grip. Amen. Amen. I mean, we, man, it's just good to be in church. Oh, Kyle, why don't you come and get us first and last verse of Amazing Grace? And, uh, <clears throat> I just, I just want to ask you this morning, on that, that morning, on that day, uh, where would you position yourself? Somewhere in hiding? Somewhere in bed? Some on their way to the graveyard? Some making the long journey home because they had give up hope? But for the few that was in the graveyard, they got to experience something unlike anything that has ha ever happened before or since. And the rock saw it all. The rock saw it all. I, I got to tell I don't know, don't know this morning what you might have need of in your heart. But I can tell you that on this Easter morning, that the same one that the rock saw get up today the Bible said is sitting at the right hand of the Father and he's making intercession for us one day soon now I believe he's going to come again and uh, when that happens I wonder whether that same rock wherever it is I don't know is going to recognize him for who he is so I ask you this morning, do you recognize him for who he is? See, because he is the resurrection and the life that the rock saw. That the rock saw. And I'll tell you, just, I, just for a moment, while Kyle is singing, if you would just bow your head, just, just for a moment. And uh, I, I just want to ask you, it's sunrise service, I know. But I don't ever want to close a service without giving somebody an opportunity to pray if they need to because I don't ever know what's going on in somebody's life. So while he sings this morning, I want to ask you, have you experienced the resurrection and the life in your heart, in your life? Have you gotten to see the things that the rock saw? If you haven't today, it's Easter sunrise service that morning so long ago when the expectations of a few were very low. The greatest event in all of history was about to take place. All because he loves you. Would you like to pray this morning? Would you like to pray this morning? While Brother Kyle is singing and the church is praying, if you've got a need in your heart today, I can invite you if you'd like, if you need, to come.
off with the Lord. All right, let us stand to our feet and we will sing the last verse of Amazing Grace because it still is. When we Thank you.